Hello and welcome to the ProjectWise Administrator Advanced Accreditation course on Enhanced Environments. This is part three of a three-part series for the lookup table section of the course. In part three, we will cover the management of lookup table content using the Excel import tool. In this section of the course, we'll learn how to use the Excel import tool for the creation and update of the data. The benefits, the Excel import tool will greatly increase the maintenance and portability of the lookup tables stored in the data sources. During this course, you will learn how to create an Excel import tool template, make the template data source independent, create an Excel import data file, and populate lookup table data using the Excel import tool. Our next steps will be to use the Excel import tool to bulk create or update the abstract documents. As an installation option during the installation of ProjectWise Explorer, Bentley provides the Excel import export tool. This is a great tool for mass creating and or updating attributed documents in a data source. This is what we'll be using for maintaining the lookup table data. There are three main steps in using this tool. For preparation, you'll create a template, one per environment, which is a spreadsheet that defines the environment and the attributes to populate. Next, you'll enter data by creating an Excel data sheet from the template. You'll enter values for the attributes, including folder names to organize the data. And then we'll populate ProjectWise by launching the Excel import tool from Tools menu in ProjectWise Explorer, which is a wizard-driven tool prompting us for the data file and how we want to create the documents. Now let's see this in action. The first step for using the Excel import tool is to create a template. Launch the tool using Tools, Create Excel Templates, Choose where you want to store the template. Give the name of the template something that refers to the data that's being stored. Click Save. Choose the environment. And be sure to choose the interface where the environment attributes reside. Click Next. By default, the environment attributes will be put in the Include column. Click Select All. Next. And Finish. Now the template has been created for the document code attributes. Repeat the process for general attributes and user attributes. Now that the templates have been created, you can open those in Excel and make some slight modifications. From Excel, we want to open the template and make a slight modification. Change the type to templates, and let's choose the document code attribute template. There are three columns we want to remove from this template. The folder ID, the object ID, and the attribute record ID. These three columns are very specific to a data source. To make this template portable to multiple data sources, we want to remove these IDs. Now save the template. Repeat the process for general attributes and project-wise user attributes. Now that the templates have been modified, let's create data files by clicking File, Save As, change the type to a workbook, 
and we want to save these in the root folder and change the name to data. Repeat the same for the general and document code templates. Now that we have data files, we can populate the information that we want to bring into ProjectWise as attributed abstract documents. For the Excel data sheets to be imported into ProjectWise, we need to enter this information. For the document code attributes workbook, we'll enter all the data for originator codes, role codes, zone codes, and level codes. For the general attributes workbook, we will enter all the data for file types. For the project-wise user attributes workbook, we'll enter all the extended data for the user accounts. Later in this course, we will see how this data is used. Before doing so, we'll need to make sure that these project-wise user accounts are created in the data source. I have added the value list in the document code attributes data workbook. Let's review this. Folder name column. This column tells us where the abstract document will be created within ProjectWise. The name column is unused, but must be a unique value within ProjectWise folder. Columns F, G, H, I, J, and K are the attributes that we want to store in ProjectWise. Notice for this one workbook, we have multiple code parts. The role codes, the level codes, the originator codes, and the zone codes. Let's look at the other data workbook. For ProjectWise user attributes data, again, the folder name is required to where to place it within ProjectWise. The name of the document is an arbitrary unique identifier. Columns F through L contains the extended data for the ProjectWise user accounts. The general attributes data workbook contains the general attributes for status codes, scales, sheet size, and file types. This environment has some additional columns, document, drawing, and model, which will identify the value list for the attribute that pertains to that particular document. Now that we have the data populated in the workbooks, let's look how we can import this in ProjectWise. From ProjectWise Explorer, click Tools, Import from Excel. On the first dialog of the wizard, choose the data file to import. We're going to use document code first. Check to create a log file as it is important for diagnosing any potential issues. Click Next. Next, make sure the environment is the correct environment. The GUI or the layout is the correct one for the data. This will indicate that the spreadsheet is formatted correctly. Next, we need to tell the Excel import tool where to place the data. Click Browse. Navigate to the Parent folder where we are storing the attribute lookup tables. Remember in the spreadsheet, we indicated that the information will be in these folders. So you would choose the parent where those folders reside. Click OK. By checking Create Subfolders, the attribute tree will be created for you during the import process. Check Always Locate Document by Name, Ignore ID Columns. Remember, we remove the ID columns so the import tool will locate any pre existing documents by their name. Check To Create New Documents. Ensure that create new versions for existing documents is unchecked. If this is checked, during the import process, updated documents will become versions. 
So the query to the lookup table will return old and new values. You do not need versions for lookup tables. Update files is unneeded as there are no files attached to the abstract documents. Check update attribute data and make sure map attributes by attribute label is checked. You do not need to update code fields or workflow states. Click Next. Now you are ready to import the data. Click Import. As the spreadsheet is importing, you'll see the information being updated. Pay attention to this dialog as it may show some error messages, which will alert you you need to check the log file after the import process. After the import is complete, it will give you a summary of how many rows were detected, meaning how many rows were in the spreadsheet, how many were skipped, how many documents were created or updated, and also if there were any errors. If there were errors, check the log file, which will indicate the issue the tool ran into. Now, if we navigate the folder system for document code attributes in each individual part, you'll see multiple records have been created and they've been placed in the correct folder for the type of part. Now you've successfully imported an attribute lookup data data for document code attributes. Repeat the same process for general attributes and project-wise user attributes. This concludes the third part of Enhanced Environments for Creating Attribute Lookup Table Content Management. During this course, you've learned how to create an Excel import tool template Make the template data source independent, create an Excel import data file, and populate lookup table data using the Excel import tool. The next section of the course called Dynamic and Triggered Attributes will define dynamic and triggered attributes and demonstrate multiple techniques on how to query and present data to the user. Lookup tables created in this course will be used for this demonstration. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you and see you next time.